I guess. Because I, I was like, where's Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon break that's point? Next, that's next week. Right. It comes out on Friday, I guess. Right. It's, it's How are we supposed to talk about it now, Wombat? Because people are playing it now because if you bought the Gold Edition, you have it today. Oh, really? I have it today? Yes. I No, I have the physical copy, though, because I went the Best Buy GCU route. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you have the Gold Edition, you get it you, digitally. You can start playing it right now. Hmm. Four days early. Love it. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. Yep. Love that technology. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, what's the early word on this? I guess we're talking uh, about it now. Uh, yeah. So I put this on the outline. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, where you put it. Mm -hmm. Did you move my stuff? Mm -hmm. I put something on the, I put a thing on the outline about it. Listen, I can't now. be responsible for the things that you put it on the outline. Oh, no, it's right here. Ghost Recon Micro. Breakpoints, oh, uh, Baba, Baba Booey. Yeah, okay. So you click on, I clicked on that and I read the article about Ghost Recon's well, Ghost Recon Breakpoints microtransactions explained. And I read through the article. It's very long yeah. because there's a lot of microtransactions right. for pretty much everything from T-shirts to time savers to whatever you could think of. They're trying to sell it to you in this game. Right. And some people are really pissed off about it. Which I totally agree on. But the writer of the article, who I do not know personally, and I'm sure is very nice, but this made me laugh. Um, the, 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 where is it? Uh, here we go. Uh, Heather Alexandra, who wrote this article for Kotaku, uh, in the comments section, because hmm. I was curious to know what people thought about the microtransactions, sure. so I started reading the comments. Someone called her out and for being like a shill for writing this whole long thing, which I don't understand why. Uh, and then she said, I have absolutely no friggin' clue where you're getting the idea that I'm being apologetic. Breakpoint's been not mind-numbingly generic, and every single second I'm playing it is a second I wish I was doing something, oh boy. anything else. <laughs> Yikes. So, and I've heard rumblings from people so far, and I looked out, I was checking it out on Reddit, because I'm a big fan of Wildlands, that's no secret. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this game is very bad. Yikes. Hmm. So, I don't know this for a fact. I have not played it. I just can go off of what I'm feeling. And when I read a comment like that by someone on Kotaku, that makes me think, hmm, maybe this game is not good. That did the first one, it didn't do great at launch either, though. The first one had really bad reviews at launch. I right. think there were a lot of technical issues with the game at launch and took a while and a bunch of patches to make it the game that it became, which was, an, an I thought, an amazing game. It's, but it also, I, I, a lot I wouldn't of people call it an amazing like it game. For, it's a very playable game. I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. How's that? Is that better? I mean, I played it to 100% completion, but it's I not know, so. It's not amazing it's it's i'm going to sit here and check things off this checklist and i enjoy that and shoot people that's part of yeah that's part of the it's on the checklist. checklist yeah yeah i like that um i enjoyed that game very much but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because we're not reviewing wildlands we're not reviewing breakpoint either so uh <laughs> right i'm gonna you play it to, by you... by next week's show i'll i'll play it yes you will have played it so you can tell us how it is looking forward to it. what cheapy and i played at e3 it felt very much like more wildlands. I, I played some of the demo. It didn't seem terrible, but, but you know, what do I know? Remember when we waited online for an hour to play that, and then I couldn't invert the look on it, and then I yep. basically like, and then we watched fifteen minutes of cutscenes during yeah, yeah. the demo. That was awesome. That's like I love love love, love to waste an hour, just fantastic <laughs> hour and a half, really. But I look forward to you letting us know if it is mind-numbingly generic. <laughs> Okay, but it I hope be it's a little bit mind numb. Like if it's if it's not too mind numbing, they they've switched up the formula. On that game. <laughs> oh, quite, I didn't think it was quite honest. Mm. No, I mean it's very formulaic. Like you're just doing the same thing over oh, and over yeah. again. But it was but it was fun formulaic. Yeah, yeah. You formulaic the isn't always a bad thing. They're fun yeah. little set piece missions that you can do co op and just yeah. sort of yeah, that's that's okay. But maybe maybe yeah. this game like the other one needs like six months to get tightened up. Yeah, yeah, they're going to support it. There's no doubt about that. Right. So they're going to turn it into something. 
there's five pages of microtransactions. They're going to figure out something. Yeah, they'll figure something out. It's hard mm. to want to rush out and pay full price for uh, an Ubisoft game at launch when you know. Sure. Sure. But even even now you can get it for like it's not out yet. It's fifty bucks plus ten dollar credit at Amazon. Yeah, I mean, that's at what Best I Buy. At Best Buy. But it's only gonna get cheaper. So Yep. Yep. I'm thinking maybe Black Friday. Yep. Should be good. Mm-hmm. This is this was sort of a follow up to your Ghost Recon microtransactions talk, but this is from Colonel Rangoon with a good question. How could a sixty dollar game successfully monetize their microtransactions without backlash from consumers? They need to be all cosmetic. They need to be pay for what you want. And it has to be at a one-to-one currency. So it can't be like 600 quad points, which cost $5 for 600. Right, right, right. Don't, don't make me do weird-ass math. Right. You don't, so, they don't even need to have virtual currency if they don't want to. Exactly. It should be, oh, I like that shirt. I'm going to pay $2 for that shirt. I don't want to buy a box and randomly hopefully get the shirt. I don't want to have to deal with math to figure out how much money would I need to spend to get the 1,250 points <laughs> so I could get the thing with the three shirts. Right. That's too much. Right. And and they all do that. And that's why they're all terrible. And that's why everyone who works for a video game company is going to hell. <laughs> I, I don't make the rules. Right. It's in the Bible. I know. It says it. I mean, it's it's really not about like not having backlash. It's about they're all playing a balancing act of how much backlash, right? Right, right. Yeah. How much backlash can they get away with? Yes. Right, like that's that's you're finding the sweet spot of of backlash and profits. But to do it without making people mad is easy. It's just not profitable. Right, it's right. Like, no, you no, have no, to no, make no. some it's percentage less of people mad. It's less, still profitable. Exactly. And the biggest scam is the weird currency based. Against dollars, there's that's so the many scam. Because there's, so there's going to be the, there's always going to be leftover. That's how you avoid the backlash. That's one way of avoiding it. It's just confusing everybody. Yep, that's part of that's all part of the money making schemes is confusion. It's literally part of the. It's in the playbook. Mm-hmm. There should really be a, like a bill of rights for gamers about how really? microtransactions. Now, you sound like you sound like one of those bad gamer take guys. Where's the gamers' bill of rights? We're like a race too. <laughs> there was a wasn't there like a gamer Sh- shitty gamer takes is a Twitter account. No, 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 no. There was like a voting, a gamer voting. Like uh... I don't, I don't know. But you sound like one of those people. No, Tell but... us how the Joker is. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I'm what I'm saying is that it wouldn't be too hard to put together a list of of microtransaction mechanics that we find sort of irrehensible? What's the word? (laughs) Not reprehensible? I don't know. I'm I'm trying to make up a word here. I think you are. Irreprehensible. Yes, that's the word. There's there's some that we can tolerate, and there's some that we just think are bullshit, like, like loot boxes, paid for loot boxes. And I don't think it's too much to ask for companies to not put these things in their games because some of them are are psychologically manipulative and some of them are just, you know, kind of gross, taking advantage of us. And they need us. That's where Borderlands 3 comes to the rescue. They're, they Well, they they don't do they, – they do a pretty good job at, in that department at least. But then again, their whole gameplay loop is based upon basically a loot box in the game. But but that's they're not the one time purchase. Yes, that's right. It's yeah, it's it's hard to get too too uh, fired up about how they've done their microtransactions. So that I think that's a I guess a, a way that they can successfully monetize a sixty dollar game with microtransactions. Well, they don't have microtransactions. Don't they sell uh, skins in there? No. Well, they going they're going to though. No, they they have stated they're going to do DLC, traditional DLC, like they did with the other Borderlands games. It's forty dollars for the season pass for Borderlands. Hmm? Okay. I thought he. I thought I remember Randy on stage entertaining us with tales of, of skins of skins, and that they would. I they, remember that too. And then but he I said, guess they, "Maybe not," or maybe he got outvoted. No, he said they were going to have skins. And it was going to be like traditionally 
But then he first he had said there were going to be no microtransactions, and then he said traditional skin microtransactions. But maybe now we're back to no. I don't know. I I mean, there's nothing that's out there. Well, they they would have it. Yeah, but there's not like even a store in there for them. They're all right. based upon um, like shift codes and VIP right. codes and email codes and everything currently. So right. I mean, it's look. It's certainly not on the level of like an Ubisoft with. Right. Uh, if Assassin's you can't Creed. trust Randy Pitchford, who can you trust? <laughs> right. He's got you back. He's going to entertain you, coming and going. He's going to take care of you totally. And he's not going to rip you off with microtransactions. It can be done. It can totally be done. But these companies know it's a science. It's like a science. They figured out how to just what can make the most money. And they're going to, some of these companies are just going to do it. But we need that Bill of Rights. But Wombat, you know, is making fun of me. So now I'm not going to do it. No, you're not going to do it. I was going to start this whole thing. You're going to be on shitty gamer takes. <laughs> That's, with, your, I, with your name blurred it's out. It's a good gamer take, not. I think. Uh-huh. I think it's a good gamer take. Look, we Jim, need a gamer bill of rights because we're the consumer, and that makes us right. No, I mean, look, bill. you can't. You can't argue. Uh, you sound silly. I mean, you can't argue that I'm wrong. You know that I'm no, not making not sense wrong. here. I can argue that you're wrong as much as I want. Well, you can argue, but <laughs> we just. I mean, it's I, my right. Do I need to have my arguer's bill of rights? <laughs> yes. <laughs> can't even argue anymore in this in this year. <laughs> Too many SJWs. SJWs have taken away my ability to argue. Yep. Uh, so what if I think some races are better than others? <laughs> right. All right, let's move on. And by races, I mean in the Olympics. Right, yeah. It, the hurdles are much better than the 100-yard dash. True. Let's see. I told you. Oh, man. At the, at, uh, the relay race at Ty's uh, Japanese school. <laughs> Check uh-huh. this. You know they they uh they got the relay race and the way they do it, it's with the batons and everything. The they way, pass the duchy on the right hand side. The way they do it is the the anchor the anchor's like okay. the last guy to go, right? I understand what it yes. is. They all yes. they're all wearing sashes. To, so back can, to sports. Yeah, well, back yeah. to sports. They're all wearing sashes because to signify that they're the anchor. And so it's time for the anchors to go, and they're all running around. And this one guy, his sash is just. It's way too big on him. They didn't like tie it to him. It's just, it's just not good. And it's just slowly moving down, moving down, moving down to the last quarter of the race where it's that da- now down around his ankles and he trips and falls and Ty's team loses. Oh, yep. Got to work on that. But guys. That's, that's the coach's fault. Yeah. Fire the coach. I've yeah. never heard of attaching sashes to the Me neither. It's Japanese weird. field day. It's a lot of weird things going on. You just got to go with the flow and just be glad that you're not in Japan watching it where it's much longer and much less fun. Hmm. It's much more serious. So I'm just like happy. Just happy that this would not be going through this in Japan where I've gone through it many, you know, I don't know, five years worth. Um, yeah. They do it much better here. They Americanize it a little bit for the whiteies like me. 